Stepping into Shakespeare presents Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Act Two. Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore I shall crave of you your leave that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of whither you are bound. No, sooth, sir. My determinant voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended? But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me was yet of many accounted beautiful. But, though I could not with such estimable wonder over far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare ye well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the manners of my mother that, upon the least occasion mourn mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But come what may. I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have since arrived, but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. And one thing more, that you never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir. You peevishly threw it to her. And her will is, it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much methought her eyes had lost her tongue. But she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me. Sure, the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger... None of my lord's ring, why he sent her none. I am the man. If it be so, as tis, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy it is for the proper false in woman's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fudge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day. What thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. A 
approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes, and did Luculo sugere thou knowst? Nay, my twoth. I know not, but I know to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early, so that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say. But I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. But a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Marianne, I say, a stoop of wine. Here comes the fool in faith. How now, my heart? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now let's have a catch. By my twelfth, the fool has an excellent breast. I had rather than forty shillings I had such a leg and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. Come on, there is sixpence for you. Let's have a song. Would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song. A love song. Aye, aye. I care not for good life. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming That can sing both high and low That can sing both high and low Excellent, good in faith. Good, good. What is love, tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth the stuff will not endure. Youth the stuff will not endure. A mellifluous voice as I am true knight. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious in faith. To hear by the nose it is dulcet in contagion. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls of one weaver? Shall we do that? And you love me? Let's do it. I am dog as a catch. By your lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. Most certain. <gasps> Let our catch be, thou knave. Hold thy peace, that I prithee hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, and I pray thee, hold thy peace, hold thy peace, I pray thee, hold thy peace. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not called up her steward Marvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. We are politicians, Malvolio's a Pega Ramsey, and three merry men be we. Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley, lady, there dwelt a man in Babylon, lady, lady. Beshrew me, the knight's in admirable fooling. <laughs> Aye, he does well enough if he be disposed, and so do I too. He does it with better grace, but I do it more natural. Oh, the twelfth day of December. For the love, O oh God, peace. My masters, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Sneck up. Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbours you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanours, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show, his days are almost done. Is it even so? But I shall never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. Shall I bid him go? What and if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. 
Out of tune, sir, ye lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favour at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears. Twere as good a deed as to drink when a man's a hungry, to challenge him in the field, and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Counts was today with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a neighwood and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us. Possess us. Tell us something of him. Marry, sir. Sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What? For being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly but a time-pleaser, an affectioned ass that constate without book and utters it by great swathes, the best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his ground of faith that all that look on him love him, and on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What will thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose too. He shall think by the letters that that will drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with him. My purpose indeed, a horse of that colour. And your horse now would make him an ass. Ass I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two, and let the fool make a third, where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Penthesilia. Before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle, true bred, and one that adores me. I was adored once, too. Let's to bed, knight. Thou hadst need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Send for money, knight. If thou hast her not to the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, come. I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, night. Come, night. Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, that old and antic song we heard last night, methought it did relieve my passion much, more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times. Come, but one verse. He is not here, so please your lordship, that should sing it. Who was it? Feste the jester, my lord, a fool that the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out and play the tune the while. Come hither, boy, if ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly, my life upon it. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favour. 
What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She's not worth thee, then. What years, i' faith? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wear she to him. So sway she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas, that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come, the song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain, the spinsters and the knitters in the sun, and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. It is silly sooth, and dallies with the innocence of love, like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, prithee sing. Come away, come away, death, and in sad cypress let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath, I am slain by a fair, cruel maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you, oh, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it. Not a flower, not a flower sweet, on my black coffin let there be strewn. Not a friend, not a friend greet my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand thousand sighs to save, lay me, oh, where sad true lover never find my grave to weep there. There's for thy pains. No pain, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure, then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy God protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. Farewell. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love... More noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands, the parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her. Tell her, I hold as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir... I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can buy the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith they are as true as heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man, as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman. I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste. Give her this jewel. Say, my love can give no place. Bide no dinay. 
Come thy way, senior Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death in melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to have the niggardly rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know, he brought me out of favour with my lady about a bear baiting here. To anger him, we'll have the bear again, and we will fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not. It's pity on our lives. Here comes the little villain. How now, my metal of India? Get ye all three into the box tree. Malvolio's coming down this walk. Observe him for the love of mockery. For I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close, in the name of jesting. Lie thou there, letter. For here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune. All is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that, should she fancy, it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on to? He is an overweening rogue. Slight. I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Ah, rogue. Pistol him. Pistol him. Peace, peace. There is example for it. The lady of the Stracchi married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fie on him, Jezebel. Oh, peace. Now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state... Over a stone bow to hit him in the eye. Calling my officers around me, in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone. Oh, peace, peace. And after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs. Two for my kinsman Toby. Bolts and shackles. Oh, peace, peace, peace. Now... Now, seven of my people, with an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while, and perchance wind up my watch, or play with my... some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control, saying... Cousin Toby, you must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab. Nay, patience, or we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I knew twas, for many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's and her T's, and thus makes she her great P's. It is, in contempt of question, her hand. Her C's, her U's and her T's. Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. By your leave, wax. Soft. And the impression, her Lucrece, with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. To whom should this be? Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio... Marry, hang thee, Brock. I may command where I adore, but silence, like a Lucrece knife, with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A fustian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. And the end. What should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me. Softly. M-O-A-I. M. Malvolio. M. Why, that begins my name. Did not I say he would work it out? M. But then there is no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. 
A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. I, or I'll cudgel him and make him cry, O. And then I comes behind. I, and you had an eye behind you. You might see more detraction at your heels and fortunes before you. M O A I. Oh, soft, here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble sloth and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants, let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross-gartered. I say remember. Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point devised the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross guarded I thank my stars I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings, and cross guarded even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove, my stars be praised. Here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling... Thy smiles become thee well. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. I will not give my part of this sport for a pension of thousands. I could marry this wench for this device. So could I too. And ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I neither. Here comes my noble gold catcher. Why, thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true, does it work upon him? Like aqua vitae with a midwife. If you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a colour she abhors and cross guarded <laughs> a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent <laughs> devil of wit. I'll make one too. Stepping into Shakespeare Twelfth Night is produced by Therese Tulliat and Sarah Lynn Dawson. Directed and cast by Matthew Brenner. Audio engineering by Tim Bond. We would like to thank the Swiss Cultural Institute for their support of our podcast. We'd also like to thank the Swiss Church London and Francesco Sesto for his logistical support during our event.